What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Film Room on the channel. Today, we're going to be breaking down new Pittsburgh Steelers left tackle Broderick Jones, the 14th pick in the 2023 NFL Draft. Steelers traded up for him. I got 40 clips, man, that we're going to roll through here. I'm going to break down all these plays, show you guys what his game is all about, where you know he excels, you know some of the things that he has to work on. And then at the very end, I'm going to give my thoughts on him as a player, give my projection and overall outlook for him with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Just please, if you like this type of content, please make sure to hit that like button. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. All that greatly helps me out. Let's get started, man. Broderick Jones, six foot five, 311 pounds, um, 34 and three quarters inch arms. I mean, this is the prototype left tackle build for the modern NFL. Uh, he had a sub five second, 40 yard dash, a 174, 10 yard split. 30, 30 inch vertical, 108 inch broad jump. I mean, this dude is a crazy athlete. And some of the ways that Georgia kind of deployed him and weaponized his athleticism was using him as a puller and getting him out on the perimeter in space. Um, you see here against Florida, you know, this defensive back right here, he is a deer in the headlights. You know, this is not the site that you're looking for. This gargantuan left tackle coming your way unimpeded. Jones does a good job, you know, getting low playing with good leverage, good pad level, you know, torquing those hips, driving his feet, finishing uh, at the end of the rep. And that's that's really all over his tape, man. He's a tone setter up front. Um, I like the physical demeanor. He plays a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. Uh, that's definitely something that I appreciate. Um, and just the way that he moves out in space is really different for a left tackle. He's one of the better pulling tackles that I can remember in recent memory. Uh, it's, a, it's a joy to watch him get the chance to do this. You see the clean footwork, the little skip pull. Uh, they're running GT counter here. This is a DB type that he is running stride for stride with right here uh, to the perimeter. You know, he's going to be able to get a hat on a hat here. McIntosh has an easy running lane. Look at all this green grass here. We're going to get an explosive play. Uh, nice 10, 15 yard run there on the perimeter. And one thing I appreciate about Jones, some of these bigger tackles, you know, they can get out in space and they're kind of just like a runaway freight train. And if they land on somebody yeah that's great but one thing that jones does really well is he moves his eyes between targets and can quickly identify you know who he needs to grab uh, on this one you see he's originally looking at these two outside defenders but he realizes that there's a underneath defender that could potentially threaten the running back so he's gonna change direction you know you see him flip those hips you know get his hips around boom lay a punishing blow on this defender, stop him right in his tracks. This is going to help spring a massive run, but pay attention to the finish here. We already have two pancakes on this video. This isn't a highlight reel. This is just film, but two pancakes on film already. You know, finishing plays to the whistle in the season opener. That's how you set the tone right there at left tackle. Just another example right here of just him, like working through different threats, you know, the change of direction ability. We're going to get into some of his pass pro stuff here in a little bit, just because I know a lot of you guys are curious about his work in pass pro. It seems like that's the main point of conversation, but I just think he's an NFL ready run to uh, run blocker, man. Like I, I really do think that he's ready made in that regard. And, you know, Georgia, anytime they ran behind big number 59, it seemed like good things happen. You see him getting his hands high and tight here, you know, inside, inside the shoulder pads, you know, just getting that full extension, driving those legs, you know, torquing those hips towards to generate power. You know, he takes this dude 10 yards out of the play. I mean, that's an impressive rep, and it makes for a really easy cutback lane for the running back. You know, every running back wants to run through holes like that um, in the season opener. Again, uh, he's a people mover up front. I think that's one of the best ways to kind of describe his game is that he, you know, easily displaces guys out of gaps. Uh, you know, he's going to end up coming down here on this 4-I. Type gets his hands high and tight, run those feet, you know, keep driving those feet forward, creating that push up front. Look how far he moves this guy, you know, not just horizontally, but, you know, he takes this guy a good six, seven yards backwards. You know, the running back's not touched until he's five yards down the field. That's exactly what you want if you're an offensive coordinator. Really like this rep as well, but unfortunately we get a miscommunication on the zone read. Um, he's going to come down and get this reach block. 
you know, you see he, he just explodes out of his stance. Such a good athlete in space, you know, quick feet. Um, he's going to get his helmet to the play side, which is exactly what you want, and get that inside arm up uh, and just try to use his body to shield this hole. And we've got a really good lane right here to where the running back is really all only going to have to beat number four. But unfortunately, he doesn't have the ball, and we've got the ball on the turf, and it's a turnover. But good rep by Jones nonetheless. That kind of shows his ability as a reach blocker. Another nice rep here. Just coming down, kind of washing this guy out of his gap. You know, sometimes, you know, his hand placement's not the greatest, and you'll see that really in Bass Pro. But he's just so strong, man. This dude's just a powerful human being. You know, he's thickly built. Um, you know, his lower body's strong enough to where he can, you know, drive guys endless e easily. But, you know, he's got upper body strength as well, just to, you know, use his length and just easily move guys out of gaps. You know, we get another 10 yard run because of it. You know, him and Darnell Washington did some awesome things, especially when they were on the same side, man. It, it was a joy to watch them, uh, you know, run block together on some of these concepts that Georgia would run. And I thought this Kentucky game was one of his better uh, games that kind of highlighted some of his strengths as a player. You know, we get a big number zero here. You know, I just like the hand placement here. It's really high and tight, playing with good pad level, good leverage. You know, just running those feet, man, just – trying to torque those hips, run those feet, get this guy moving vertically. You know, he ends up, you know, slowly pushing this guy four or five yards off the ball. You know, these five, six-yard gains, man, that those take a toll on a defense. Um, that's how you set the tone. Really nice rep here as well. Again, just just find 59 and run his way. With that, with that length and how, how long his arms are, he's easily able to just kind of engulf defenders. And he's just going to, like, let this number 15 here. He wants to peek inside. Um, okay, I'll just shield you to the outside and let my running back bounce this. Just a good job sustaining the block, you know, keeping a hat on a hat. You know, and, of course, with how athletic he is, you, you'd expect that he's good at getting to the second level, but especially when he's uncovered, man, you know, it, this is just easy for him. And one, th one of the things that I like about him is he comes to balance really well. He's not out of control when he gets to the second level. You know, he's patient. We'll, uh, make sure that his shoulders are square to his target like this right here. Lunges a little bit, but you can see just how he drives this second level defender all, all the way to the secondary. This one, he's, you know, he's looking for a, uh, you know, a bump block, but he doesn't, he realizes that that's not necessary. So he climbs the second level, gets his backside linebacker. Um, you know, this linebacker is trying to sw kind of swim past him a little bit with quickness, but a nice job just redirecting him and using his body to kind of shield off this cutback lane for the running back. And we get an, ex we get another explosive play out of it. Now we're going to get into some pass pro stuff, show you guys some of the stuff that he does extremely well. Um, he has really quick, light feet, um, and it, he's really good out of his stance. He can get to his landmarks and his pass sets, vertical, uh, 45, jump set. You know, he can do all this different stuff. Uh, but it's, he's a really difficult dude to beat to the edge, and he protects the outside shoulder, that soft corner, uh, really well. And defenders really, I feel like, got got frustrated with him because he just doesn't let them beat him outside, um, which creates for a really nice pocket for the quarterback as well. Nice job just kind of running that guy off the arc. You know, and for, for Jones, I think one of the biggest differences between him and a guy like Dan Moore, who's been the Steelers' left tackle over the past couple of years, is just how quickly he can transition to his anchor, which is something that Moore's always really struggled with. Uh, you'll see this here. You know, he just easily, um, easily transitions to where he basically usually only needs about one hop, and then he stalls out these bull rushes or speed rushes. Even if his hand placement isn't great, um, most guys, he's just so strong and so quick to his anchor that it really doesn't even matter. Um, this is a fun matchup against Ohio State. This number 44 dude, man, he's he's going to be an NFL player uh, and a good one at that. They had a fun back-and-forth battle. You know, he's he's got to be cognizant of this defensive lineman um, on his side, using that drag hand a little bit, and then he's got to get out to this wide nine. There's a lot of space that he has to defend. So 44 is able to kind of get a nice little runway. Uh, 
to him and generate a lot of speed into that speed to power. One thing that he does here that you'll see kind of throughout this pass pro video, part of the video is he ducks his head and he bends at the waist a lot. And that's not technically sound, but what I like about this, especially towards the end of the season, he started to try to fix some of his flaws and you can see him just thinking on the fly, you know, right here, he's bending at the waist a little bit, putting his helmet in the block, which is not what you ideally want to do. Uh, but he's going to try to refit that outside hand and get that under the blockers or the the rushers' uh, shoulder pads, which I like that, and it helps him, you know, stall out that speed to power rush. Really nice rep. You know, they went back and forth, man. I think this play really kind of encapsulates his uh, his grip strength. You know, when his hands are high, are in tight like they're supposed to be, and he has good hand placement. You know, he can really control reps. You know, this is a dominant rep right here. He's, you know, got good posture. You know, we're in a really powerful position right here. And 44, as talented he is, as he is, you know, he, he has no shot to move him backwards. You know, he's just basically standing still. Just a dominant rep right there. You know, and just to be completely honest uh he's just raw technically and we'll get to some of the some of the examples of that but he's just also a freak athlete and extremely powerful and gifted from an athletic standpoint like this is a good example of that he's trying to refit his hands because he is way too wide you see how both of his hands go outside the shoulder pad to where he's almost bear hugging this defensive uh lineman but you know he's trying to work through it you know transition this force upwards but he's not able to land and refit that outside hand so he's basically trying to anchor here with one hand and you know he's lunging a little he's leaning a little bit to the right off balance but he's able you know to get rebalanced and anchor well enough on this rep even though you know technically speaking um it's not ideally what you want from a technical perspective um but he's just so gifted that it works, especially against lower competition like this. Um, the long arms, you know, the 34 and three fourths inch arm length. I mean, that definitely comes in handy, you know, to make that first significant contact on edge rushers. You see it here. He's got, he packs a pop with his hands. I want you to pay attention to how, just how, you know, he's going to two hand punch here, but he's not lunging. He's in a good power position, you know, shoot his hands while continuing to set. But watch this edge rusher's helmet just fly backwards. You know, that stunned that edge edge defender to the point where, you know, the rep's basically over from that point. You know, he's able to easily, you know, just keep kick slide, slide his feet, stay square to the rusher. I mean, that's a beautiful rep right there. But, you know, that length, it can be weaponized in pass pro too. He's just got to get more consistent with it. You know, there are some dominant reps on tape where you know when things all come together from with, for him from a technique perspective he can do some really good things in pass pro like this right here just a dominating rep um you know again this rusher's trying to you know beat him to the outside you know easily able to you know just stay in front of him and then once he gets to the apex of the drop just drop the anchor and this number 15 is like kicking and screaming because he's he knows he's done. You know, Jones just puts him in a cage and locks him away, throws away the key. Just another example right here, you know, of his hand placement being really good and helping him anchor uh, more efficiently. Stetson Bennett with an awful throw. You know, playing with good pad level right here, you know, staying low. You know, when his hands are in tight, man, it makes it a lot easier on him. It would be nice if, uh, you know, he did it more consistently. But because of that, you'll see his recovery ability, which I want to note later in the video. You know, his recovery ability, I think, is one of my favorite parts of his game. I just wish he didn't have to do it as much. You know, kind of putting his head into the block a little bit, waist bending. But again, just such a quick transition to his anchor, just to stall out rushes. Even against some of these powerful uh, South Carolina defensive linemen, I felt like, you know, they just were no match for him, you know, at his best. This is against Zach Harrison, a guy who's going to hear his name called during this year's NFL draft, um, probably as early as like the second or third round. Really long, powerful guy, freak athlete. Um, 
you know, this is what I talk about, like at the end of the season, it felt like he was kind of starting to figure out some of his flaws and trying to fix them um, just in the middle of reps. You know, you see him, you know, wide of this hand placement. So Harrison is able to, you know, establish first contact because Jones is late with his hands. And, you know, he doesn't even have his feet planted right here when he goes to strike. So Harrison's in a power position. He's going to try to just go speed to power and push him back into the quarterback. What I like here is even though Jones gets off balance, you know, he's going to try to refit this hand, this right hand underneath to try to give him a better, uh, a better chance to re-anchor. And, you know, he does it. It's it's late, and Harrison gets a pressure, and this is an incompletion. But, um, you know, sometimes good is good enough. You know, that's not a disastrous rep. You know, sometimes you lose. But if you lose slowly, you know, that's better than giving up a sack. This is a, a really interesting game, this Kent State game. You know, just his ability to kind of shut down some of these lower competition at, uh, rushers. You know, he looked like a dude in that game. He looked like um, a top 20 pick, which is what you'd expect when you go up against guys like that. But this is my favorite rep, I think, in this video, which is funny because, you know, it looks like a bad one. Um, but I'll tell you why I like it so much. Just that recovery ability, man. Um, you know, as an offensive lineman, you're going to get put into compromising positions, and it's all about how you get yourself out of those. Um, even the best left tackles, that's, what's, that's what makes them so great is, you know, you're going to face a lot of these difficult edge rush, edge rush or matchups. Can you get yourself out of compromising positions when early in the rep, you know, you lose? And, you know, he's trying to set – set but he gets beat inside here and this is a outside spin move so this is a move you never see in college and the only rusher that i can think of that does this in the pros like consistently is brian burns really rare move and a sick move from 44 honestly so it gets him leaning you see he's really wide in his base right now he's leaning to the inside 44 at this point you know he's probably thinking that was sick I've got this dude beat. I mean, if you look at Jones right now, he doesn't have his left foot on the ground. He is completely facing the wrong direction with 44 headed towards the quarterback. But watch this recovery ability. To, to flip his hips and be able to get in front of this guy is unbelievable. To force him to spin back upfield. And Stetson Bennett, you know, steps up here. Brother, we have got to get rid of the football. We cannot climb the pocket and start pump faking one, two, three times. Of course, you're going to get hit from behind, man. That's not that's a really good rep uh, by Broderick Jones. Probably my favorite rep that I've seen on tape from him, just that recovery ability uh, being put on display. Here was another example. This one's tough because I think he's trying to uh, he's trying to set wide like on a 45 here, but we get a slant from the entire defensive line. So he's setting left and the defensive line slanting right. So you see him, he's a little bit out of position here, but does a good job, you know, just trying to mirror, do his best here to change directions and ride this guy up the arc. You know, again, this is good enough, right? Quarterback's still able to get, um, you know, step into his throw, deliver a touchdown pass. This is a savvy little move here from this edge rusher that I really liked. Um, and I also think it shows some technical stuff from um, – from Broderick Jones as well, you know, he's, he's going to flash this outside hand. So he's going to try to get this edge rusher uh, to telegraph what he's doing. You know, he gets into his chest, but Jones has that left hand, you know, in tight. So he's in control here, but then the edge rusher, he's going to try to kind of just yank him down a little push pull, but Jones, you know, that balance, the contact balance here to recover, you know, not fall down. And then, you know, to continue riding him up the arc. I mean, look at that pocket uh, for the quarterback, you know, still an interception, but, um, but I wanted to show, you know, kind of some of the things that Jones has to work on in particular. I think they really came to light against um, Missouri and LSU against Isaiah McGuire and BJ Ojolari, two edge rushers that I really like, but um, I think that they kind of exposed some of his flaws in pass protection. And, you know, this is a good rep against, um, Isaiah McGuire, you know, stalling this rush out. McGuire is a really powerful dude. He's able to, you know, kind of mirror, stay in front of him. Uh, but for the most part, McGuire really kind of took it to him in this game. Um, and it, like I said, he's a good player. It's just, you know, Roger Jones is going to see a lot of good players uh, at the next level if you're going to be a starting left tackle. 
And you see a lot of his flaws and pass protection show up in this game. Um, just from a technical perspective, ducking his head. So his helmet is facing towards the turf. He is bear hugging McGuire. You see his uh, right hand right now. It's basically going to shoot almost to the numbers. And his out his outside hand is also around the shoulder pads. And McGuire, what, what, what this does is it allows McGuire to get right into his chest. And, you know, speed rush, even speed rushers are going to be able to capitalize on this at the next level. But when you get a power rusher like this that you're going to give a runway to and allow him to just run right through your center uh, because you're so wide in your hand placement, that can be problematic, you know, and you see him easily drive him backwards because of it. Kind of another example right here, except, you know, he's not even staying square on this one. Um, and, you know, he kind of starts leaning towards the outside a little bit. McGuire does a good job selling this upfield before, you know, taking this speed to power. But Jones, again, you kind of see the hand placement. Like, look at his right hand. It is on the numbers. That is not where we want to be here. You know, again, hand placement's poor, kind of allows McGuire to get underneath his shoulder pads and lift him upwards, get him off balance. Um, and then we get a quarterback hit and an incompletion because of it. You know, and this was just really all over the film. There were a couple more reps that I would call like more split decisions that I didn't want to argue with people about in the comments. But, um, you know, it was consistent, man. I felt like that McGuire really took it to him um, in pass pro. Just consistently giving up his chest. You know, hands and hands and feet not really in sync either on this one. You know, he's trying like and even here, he does stall this out late. It's just he makes things so hard on himself because of his hand placement, his hand timing. You know, I think his footwork here is kind of wonky too. He gets real narrow here, starts leaning a little bit. Looks like he's about to cross his feet a little bit. But a nice rip on McGuire. This one here, like I said, he's a hard dude to beat around the edge. So a lot of people just stop trying. But I felt like McGuire kind of got a little smart. You know, once he beat him down the middle a couple times, he tried to hit him around the edge. And, you know, he doesn't get out of his stance really well here. I'm not sure if he's just trying to set uh, more vertically or a little indecision. But doesn't get out of his set. Again, we get our shoulders completely turned here. And then this is not a power position. Uh, just bending at the waist, that's a frequent thing on tape too. Uh, we've already got the hand placement kind of lost here, and McGuire is able to kind of get underneath the shoulder pad and bend the edge, and he's, you know, a split second away from getting a, a strip sack there. And the next matchup that I thought that, um, you know, he really struggled in pass pro against was B.J. Ojolari um, against LSU. And Ojolari is a fluid, loose athlete. He's going to hear his name called um, in the 2023 NFL draft as well. But, you know, this was another matchup that I thought, you know, he kind of lost, at least in pass protection. All these clips are from the second quarter of this game uh, where Ojolari just kind of got on a heater and started taking it to him. He's not really a power guy, but you see just with his hand placement and not establishing that first contact, um, he's going to give up his chest, and Ojolari is able to use that long arm and just push him right back into the quarterback, which causes Stetson Bennett to drop his eyes on third down. Going to kind of scramble here, but he's well short of the first down on that one. You know, forces him to move off his spot. Ojolari hits him with you know pretty sick ghost move, to be honest. Uh, but again, you see him bending at the waist on this one a little bit. You know, off balance, not staying in a power position. And then Ojolari is able to beat him around the corner. He was really the only guy that I saw beat him around the corner a couple times in the five or six games that I watched. Um, here we're going to get a little two-hand swipe. So, yeah, I mean, I it's a little bit concerning to me because I felt like McGuire and Ojolari were both the – you know, two best pass rushers that I saw him go against. And I thought that he struggled in both matchups, but I do think it just highlights the fact that he's just, he's probably a year away in pass protection. At least um, he's got to clean up some of these technical deficiencies that he's got, you know, the lean in the waist bending lunging and really just the hand placement, man. Got to stop giving up 
his chest to rushers, man, especially at the next level because guys are going to be bigger, faster, stronger uh, than they were in college. But um, overall, I completely understand the Steelers moving up for Roger Jones uh, and trading up to get him to secure a potential uh, top 10 left tackle in the league, I think, just based on his traits, what he is um, as an athlete, what he is already as a run blocker, and what he could be as a pass protector if he just cleans up some of his technical flaws um, in pass protection. But um, he's he was the number 21 player on my big board. He was my tackle three. Um, so I, I definitely get this type of investment. I'm not surprised at it at all. You know, anytime you got a rookie quarterback, you want to try to pair him uh, with a nice young tackle to protect the blinds the blind side. So um, if you guys like this video, please make sure you like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. I'll have a lot more content just like this one up through draft weekend. I'm doing film rooms on all the draft prospects that get drafted to the Steelers. Um, we're having a little pre draft uh, round two party on the channel as well tomorrow or today. So if you guys want to tune in there, you can do that as well. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Peace.